Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a charcoal drawing of a lynx in the snow. So let's see how it was done. So I'm going to draw a slightly larger cat. And I have never done a drawing of this particular cat, I think. It should be interesting. In this first stage I am doing a pencil sketch with a graphite pencil and then I'm going to switch to charcoal. I'm working on a master's touch drawing paper about 8 times 11 inches or so. I'm going to have a little bit of background which I'm going to create with, uh, with a bit of charcoal powder. Sorry about my voice, by the way, this is really the best I can do, and it's not going to be a long video either. So first I distributed this uh, charcoal dust more or less evenly, and then I started blending it with, with a paper towel. I just want a little bit of value, uh, because I'm going to try to draw some drops of snow and things like that. Now I'm going to switch to charcoal pencil or charcoal pencils <coughs> and I'm going to use Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils and I'm going to use two grades medium and soft for the most part I'm going to use a medium charcoal pencil. These can be sharpened pretty well and as you can see I can draw some really fine details with them especially with the medium one because it's a little bit harder, probably more binder in it so I'm doing the ear and the tips of the ears are a little bit darker they have this pointy hair at the top now onto the eyes <coughs> and the cat looks kind of sleepy here so the eyes are half closed I'm going to try to capture that expression. As for the reference, it's in the description if you want to check it out yourself. So that's the that's the eye on the left. Now I'm going to draw a little bit of the fur on this uh, side of the head in the cheek area. We have some longer hairs here, longer fur and some darker details here on the nose as well as the mouth, the, the line that separates the upper and the lower jaw and now moving on to the other eye again, like I said, the cat looks kind of like it's a little bit sleepy, maybe it's resting, I don't know I keep calling it the cat because, you know, it is a kind of a cat, even though it's a very large cat, well not very large, but somewhat larger cat. I don't know how big lynxes it can get, but they're certainly not as big as mountain lions, or even regular lions, of course. Now I have a lot of work to do <coughs> with this here. And, as always when drawing fur, I have to do my best to imitate the appearance of the fur by trying to match the direction and the length of the fur with the direction and the length of my pencil strokes. Notice how on the forehead area we have some darker areas, darker patches of fur uh, in the eyebrow area and for that I simply use the same pencil but I use a little bit more pressure and I make a few more marks in that area and then I go a little bit lighter around them. Now this initial stage will mostly consist of me laying down pencil strokes like I said trying to stay consistent with the length and the direction of my pencil strokes to, so that they would match roughly what I see in the reference. After that, 
I start blending with a brush. And the reason why blending is so important is because you can't draw every single hair and when you blend it will give it an appearance of density and volume it will make it look softer, fluffier and more realistic. And another thing that happens is that it also makes it look a little bit darker because while you're blending you're also pulling or pushing that charcoal dust into the lighter areas between the pencil marks. So you are adding value in the process and that's something you need to take into account while shading and while uh, drawing that fur. You need to be aware of the fact that as you blend it will get somewhat darker or considerably darker and that's always uh, what I try to keep in mind and I and I simply draw by knowing that I don't need to make it that dark all at once because it will get darker gradually now even after the blending process I go back and I work with a pencil refining the texture adding some of the darker details here and there adding a few pencil strokes maybe imitating the appearance of the fur maybe some shadow areas between the larger clumps of fur and stuff like that this area around the nose and the mouth is a little bit lighter and we have these spots or dots where the whiskers are growing out of. The whiskers won't be particularly noticeable in this drawing. I'm going to try to pull a few of them with a pencil eraser, but if they don't end up standing out too much, it's not a big deal. Now I'm moving on to this paw, and it's pretty much uh, the only leg that is visible because uh, the cat is obviously. <laughs> curled or uh, into a into a ball uh, as it's probably trying to preserve body heat so like I said just going back and refining the texture of the fur a little bit adding a little bit more value and a few more marks where needed mostly focusing on the head now because after all it will be the most interesting part of my drawing and it will be probably the most detailed part of my drawing. Now here on the nose we have an area or a patch of really really short fur. For that I can just drag my pencil and allow the pencil to create a rough texture that looks like short fur. I don't have to try to draw every single hair because sometimes, sometimes these hairs are so short that you can't really imitate that appearance. Now here, under the uh, <clears throat> under the lower jaw, around the neck area, we have much longer fur and lighter too. So for that, I will try to use longer strokes, and I will try to break it into larger look, uh, larger looking clumps of fur. And there's a little bit of shadow between the body and the snow that the cat is resting on. And now as you can see I'm moving on to the uh, to the body this shoulder area here and just trying to imitate the appearance of the fur because the body is kind of bending and twisting here the hairs are pointing in different directions maybe so it's a little bit dif more difficult to imitate and another thing that you have to try to capture is the anatomy of the animal because you see uh, when you're drawing fur there will be some darker areas or shadow areas which will be forming around the folds in the fur and the folds in the fur are following the folds in the skin which form around the parts of the body where the body bends or twists so between the head and the, or the neck area, between the 
legs, the hip area, the shoulder area. That's these are some of the parts of the body where we're going to have some more folds in that fur. And once again, even though I've done a little bit of blending, I go back and I refine the texture of the fur by adding some of these deeper shadow areas between the clumps of fur <coughs> and trying to trying to maybe define these larger folds in the fur like I'm doing now because there's a little bit more shadow here there's like a larger fold here around the uh, around those legs which are tucked in we can't really see them so I'm still working mostly with a medium charcoal pencil I will try to use a soft charcoal pencil sparingly it's a little bit darker it's not a huge difference but it's a little bit darker and maybe it'll give me that extra range of value it will be barely noticeable to the eye anyway but you know it'll help a little bit going over that again with a brush and softening that and now I'm going to do a few touches with a soft charcoal pencil because this shadow area between the head and the body is a little bit darker some of the details on the eye appear fairly dark maybe even some of these details on the ears and the nose so I'm just going back and forth and adding a few darker touches here and there with that soft charcoal pencil and now I'm working with a pencil eraser pulling some lighter marks trying to make some of these clumps of fur stand out a little bit I tried drawing some whiskers but they're not really showing up that much. The thing is that when I blend with this brush and I use the harder bristle brush it tends to push the charcoal dust into the grain of the paper so it can be a little bit difficult to erase but honestly I'm not too worried about that. I, uh, I'm not going to worry about too many of these uh, lighter details. I will just work with whatever the paper and the, and the drawing gives me. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Finishing the rest of the fur here on the body by drawing uh, the fur which is a little bit longer here and drawing in the direction of the fur again trying to match the direction and the length of the fur with the length of my strokes notice that I'm varying the direction a little bit varying the angle a little bit so that it will look more natural and after that I have to do a lot of blending with a brush. I normally use two kinds of brushes, the harder bristle brushes and the soft synthetic brushes. They're all flat brushes. And when I draw fur I tend to prefer these harder bristle brushes because while they are a little bit hard and scratchy and they do push the charcoal into the grain of the paper, they also leave a lot of that texture visible, you know. And they help me retain a lot of those marks that I made so that I I want to defeat the purpose of all of that work that I've done by laying down that texture so you see even though I'm going over that with a brush and I'm actually using quite a bit of pressure I, I can still leave a lot of that uh, texture a lot of those uh, hairs or what looks like hairs now I'm using a pencil eraser and trying to add some lighter details in the background like maybe some snowflakes you know a little bit of snow in the background and here and there I'm also using an heated eraser trying to imitate you know, the appearance of uh, snow on the on the camera lens I suppose and I'm going to add a few of those uh, lighter details on the cat as well, on the links. I'm trying to work with the Tombo Mono Zero Eraser to see if that will work a little bit better. But it, as you can see, it's kind of difficult for me to, to erase very clean marks. But, you know, a few suggestions here and there should be enough. They should do it. And I'm also, again, refining the fur here on the body by pulling some lighter marks in the fur trying to make some of those uh, clumps of fur a little bit lighter and trying to make them look more three-dimensional because when you pull a few of those lighter marks the, the those lighter clumps of fur 
they start to stand out because the shadow areas are further away from the light source and you know the uh, the lighter ones are obviously sticking out a little bit more just adding a few darker touches with a soft charcoal pencil here and there these are mostly just finishing touches a little bit here at the bottom but not too much I suppose I'm going to put my signature here in, on the right side and I'm just going to uh, modify the appearance of the nose ever so slightly add a few final marks there and do a little bit of erasing here at the bottom because I don't want this clean line I don't want it to be too well defined but the drawing is I think mostly done now I hope you like it let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out my other videos I have lots of drawings of wildlife for longer videos you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.